Hey gang, it's Jay, and I am going to bring to you guys a skill that I've practiced for a long time, had a lot of great success with it, but it is a constant learning process. It is a perishable skill. Um, it's one of those skills where if you don't consistently practice it, it's easy to lose your touch on it, and then it takes a little while to get back into the game and, and remember everything. Uh, once you get doing it again, you, you, everything starts coming back, but it is one of those perishable skills, and that is map and compass work. So we're going to discuss uh, using a map and compass, orienteering, navigation, and uh, everything that goes along with it. So I'm going to do this in a two-part video. This first part is just going to essentially be the basics. We're going to go over the parts of a compass. We're going to go over how to use the compass, how to orient a map how to take a bearing, how to do pace counts, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be a really, a, I hope, a lot of fun. Bear with me. This is the first time diving into a skill set like this. Um, even, once again, being somebody who's practiced it for many, many years, um, I've gone a few years without practicing it, and it has showed. So I hope you guys stay tuned, follow along, have fun with it. If you have kids, especially scout age kids, get them involved with this as well. This is really going to be a lot of fun, I think. So once again, two-part vi two part video. Uh, the first one here is just going to be covering the basics. So once again, hope you guys enjoy, and we'll be right back. So one of the important things when you start learning about map and compass work and orienteering is you first you need to learn about the compass. Um, what makes the compass work, the pieces parts of a uh, compass. If you just give a scout a, uh, a compass and tell them to find their way, they, they don't know what anything is. So I think it's important that you point out all the parts of a compass. So first off, we have the base plates. Base plate is going to be pretty uh, standard on most compasses. Uh, it's a see-through or a clear base plate that has all kinds of different numbers on it. Those different numbers are different scales for different types of maps, whether it's 1 in 25 thousandths, 1 in 50 thousandths, or 1 in 24 thousandths. Depends on the map supplier, whether it's the USGS, um, Bureau of Land Management, National Forest Service, engineering maps, things like that. You also have scales on the side. Um, here we have inches on one side, millimeters on the other. You're going to find that you're going to have uh, certain maps that you use that don't really have a... Um, one of the it doesn't fall in one of those scales, so it's an off scale map. So you're going to want to be able to still have the means for determining distance, whether the map, you know, it says, you know, one inch equals 400 feet, just as, you know, as an example, this map says that, or, um, or maybe it gives, you in, it gives it to you in meters. But you, either way, you're able to figure that out here with, um, with it having a clear base plate with all those different numbers on it. Next thing we move into is your rotating bezel. Your rotating bezel, this is going to contain all of your numbers for your degrees. So when you, when it comes to taking bearings, shooting azimuths, um, that's going to be very important. Also, it's going to that rotating bezel is going to come into play when it comes time to start orienting your map. You have your face plates. Your face plate contains a whole lot of information. You have your meridian lines on it which is going to come in really important when you're using larger maps that have grids on them. That's going to come to play a role, but it also has your magnetic needle. That magnetic needle is going to change depending upon where you're pointing. That's always going to point to north for us. So regardless of where your compass is uh, situated, that needle is always going to point to north. This particular one has a trillium strip on the north part of the arrow or the... Or the um, the red so that you can see it at night for nighttime navigation and then you're gonna have your actual north bearing it's the double red line here arrow you also have the glow-in-the-dark strips once again for night navigation that's what you're gonna use that for for orienting the map and taking bearings you always want to make sure those are lined up and we're gonna get into that here a lot of people will call that um, uh, putting the, the red arrow putting your magnetic needle in the red, call it red in the shed, or dog in the doghouse. Um, you'll hear those terms out there, but that that references lining those up there. Then you have your sighting mirror. 
Your sighting mirror, as you can even see in the picture, you can see the sighting mirror is designed to reflect what you're seeing on your compass. It reflects it into the sighting mirror so that when you're taking a bearing or shooting an azimuth, you can see what your bearing is. And then up on top here, you have your sighting notch. Um, you're going to look through that just like you would a gun sight um, for lining up whatever it is that you're looking at once you take your bearing. You know, whatever you, it is that you see there, whether it's a tree or a mountaintop or a, or a large stone or boulder or building, whatever it may be, that's what you're using to aim for. And then the whole package collapses, keeps it nice and secure. That's going to be really common amongst all your orienteering compasses. Alright gang, so now that we have gone through the parts of a compass, now we're going to talk about how to actually put that compass to use. One of the most important things you're going to do when it first comes to using your map and compass together is orienting your map. It all starts with getting that map oriented to north. So every map is going to have some sort of a compass rose to it. If you look here on this map, there's our compass rose right there. And the map itself is set for that's the direction of north. But what, we, but what we need to do is we need to go ahead and orient our map to north to what our area is. So the, what you're going to do first is you're going to open your compass up. Open your compass up and go ahead and get your bezel set at north. And you see that? All right. So we have it tuned to 360 degrees. We're going to go ahead and lay that on our map. Turn this down so you guys can see. Lay that on your map like so. But you need to go ahead and line that up with your compass rose. Line it up with your compass rose. So our compass rose is pointing that way for north. It just so happens to work out that our compass also lines up with that, but let's say it didn't. Let's say we were facing this direction, okay? Obviously starting off at this direction here, north is pointing this way, where our map north is pointing that way. So we need to turn ourselves until those line up. So as we turn, now all of a sudden we line up, okay? So now we know our map our map is oriented to north. So we know what direction we're going. We know that all of our terrain features or whatnot are all set up. So our map is oriented. From here we can easily look and say, okay, you know, look around you. Pay attention to pay attention to your surroundings, the topography. I happen to be in a uh, creek valley right now with a creek flowing through. I'm able to identify that on my map, which is really good, which is going to come down to pointing out the different topographical features on your map and being able to point those out. It's going to help you for just overall relationship of where you're at. Now, what if we want to take a bearing? What if we know that we need to, let's say we're on a map and compass course, and so we know that our bearing is, let's just say, 90 degrees for just the sake of a compass bearing, okay? So, 200, so... 90 degrees, not 200 degrees, 90 degrees. How do we find 90 degrees? So on our compass, we're going to go ahead and turn our bezel to 90 degrees. So we're 90 degrees on our bezel for shooting an azimuth or taking a bearing. We need to go ahead and orient that compass to north. So what you're going to do... I like finding a tree or something to stand against, like so. Turn yourself until your compass is now faced, until your compass needle is now on north through our double red line. I think we can see that. You're going to go ahead and look through there because on the mirror, on the mirror, you're going to see the reflection of the compass in the mirror. So we're making sure we're holding steady and we're going to go ahead and take a sight through the notch like we had talked about earlier through it being a gun, a gun sight. You're going to go ahead and look through there and you're going to find an object. 
and you're going to line that up. In this case, I see a tree that's probably, I don't know, 50, 60 yards away from me. I know that I can now go ahead and take that walk to that tree that I pointed out that is at 90 degrees. Once I hit that tree, pull our compass out again, reevaluate, take a new bearing. Once again, we're looking for 90 degrees. Look through that sight, line up to the next objective, whatever it may be, maybe it's a big rock, maybe it's another tree. And go ahead and take your walk to that next landmark. This way, by shooting a bearing or taking an azimuth, it is enabling you to walk in a straight line for whatever your objective point is. That way you don't wander off pace. Just walking blindly through the woods, you know, if you, you take a compass bearing 90 degrees, but you don't have an objective in front of you for what you took that off of, you're going to naturally wander off course, whether it's to the right or the left. And even after 50 yards or 100 yards, you may be 5 or 10 yards off of the point where you're supposed to be at. So you're going to constantly be off, where this way, by being able to pinpoint that location through your compass by taking that bearing and identifying an object to walk to, you can constantly stay on that straight line. So you may shoot 10 or 12 bearings all at the same, all at the same um, degrees and still get to your desired location. You're just doing it in baby steps so that you ensure you're staying on track, you're staying on point with that. So that works out really well for doing that. So now we've got our compass bearing. We're gonna go ahead and walk to that landmark. We'll walk to that tree that was in our gun sight. We're at our tree. Put your back to the tree. Pull out your compass. We're still going 90 degrees. Take a new bearing at 90 degrees. I have another tree that's about another 50 yards uphill here. And you walk that next one. Now here, I have a bunch of wet stuff in the way, a bunch of debris, so on and so forth, but I'm still maintaining eyesight on that tree. So as I come through, I can veer off path a little bit because I can still see the tree. Coming around to it. I'm at our second objective. Put your back to it. Pull out your compass again. Take another bearing. Ninety degrees again. I'm still going straight uphill to another tree. I'm gonna work my way through. Make sure I'm going to the right tree, obviously. I'm at the next tree. Back to it. Take out your compass again. Take another bearing. Keep on walking. Got a new landmark picked out. What I've done here from utilizing my map is I knew that in order for me to get back to the main trail, I knew it was 90 degrees. And guess where I'm at? I'm back off on the main trail, and I know from the trail, from the map, 
that it's just a short walk back to the trailhead or the parking lot. So some easy basic skills to utilize there for, for mapping uh, compass work. Doesn't take a whole lot. I think the important thing is orienting that map so you know, so you have a general relationship to where you're at. And then learning how to take a bearing and how to walk it and break it down into small pieces. So that's part one of my map and compass tutorial. Next one here is going to be identifying landmarks on a map and how to navigate on a map and how to use pace speeds as well for keeping track of distances. So everyone, uh, keep practicing. It's a great to go out to just a local park and uh, practice these simple skills. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. So you guys take care, stay safe, and uh, we'll touch base soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.